management update from the administration. Uh, we begin with- Mr. President, we do need to take roll. Oh, I do apologize. Roll call. Message from Councilman Godfather. Present. Councilwoman Green. Present. Councilman Herzberg. Here, attending the meeting virtually from Wayne County, Westland, Michigan. You know what? I, I appreciate that you said that. I didn't look at my notes. I'm going to back up for a moment. Because we're on Zoom, I'd ask that each council member announce the municipality, county, and state in which they are currently seated. Councilman Godbow. Present, attending the meeting virtually from Westland, Michigan, and Wayne County. Thank you. Councilwoman Green. Present, attending virtually from Westland, Michigan, Wayne County. Thank you. Councilman Herzberg. Here, attending virtually from Wayne County, Westland, Michigan. Thank you. Pro Tem Lando. Good evening. I'm president from the village of Allenson, uh, Emmett County, Michigan. Message from Steve Smith, Lil. Message from Councilman Steve Smith, McDermott. Lil. Good evening. Present, attending from uh, the DeKalb County in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you. Councilwoman Orkowski. Present, attending from Wayne County, Westland, Michigan. Thank you, President Hart. Thank you, attending remotely from Westland, Wayne County, State of Michigan. Thank you, a quorum is present. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, and thank you for correcting me on the roll call, I appreciate that. And thank you for uh, Councilman Herzberg for reminding us we have to do that uh, little issue. I was getting ready to correct him. You got to it, so thank you. It is a little out of the ordinary. Um, now, as stated, uh, we will uh, go ahead and start with announcements and presentations. Uh, we, again, uh, we begin with an uh, update from the administration, starting with Mayor Wild. Well, good evening, everybody. So it's hard to believe it's already been a week. Uh, the event that we're going to be talking about actually started on Friday, June 25th, and carried into the, the early morning hours of Saturday, June 26th. So Tonight, as part of the presentation, we're going to try to give council and all of the West End residents that will have a chance to view this meeting over the next several days, a comprehensive uh, a summary of, of the events and uh, what what our response has been and what our, what our plans are moving forward. Uh, joining us tonight is going to be uh, Deputy Mayor Mike Reddy. Perhaps you've noticed he's been wearing his muck boots around City Hall the last uh, week or so. So he's, uh, he's been spending a lot of time uh, on the streets uh, for me. Uh, Ramsey's gonna give a, a comprehensive uh, summary and basically uh, what happened when the, the phone started ringing on Friday night. Uh, Doug Morton's with us as well. He's gonna talk a little bit about, about the things that we're doing on the street. Uh, Craig Brown has been part of our uh, communications team Greg, welcome back, he has too, but he's working uh, the back control room tonight for the meeting. Uh, Steve Smith has been crunching the numbers. He's gonna give uh, council a little bit of uh, an idea of, of the estimates that we think we're looking at for the recovery efforts here. Uh, Devin, who's been handling uh, emergency procurement uh, throughout the event can talk a little bit about what we've purchased so far and, and what we still may need to purchase. Uh, and, uh, Fire Chief Morris is with us, and, and Chief Morris is uh, the emergency manager for the city. He's been our point person uh, with the county and with FEMA. He's going to talk a little bit about, about what, what his role has been and actually his dual roles. He's still our emergency manager in our COVID response. So um, everybody's been doing double duty, but I think after you hear what, what they've been doing tonight, you can be pretty impressed. The team's been working really hard on this. Um, Council, before the meeting tonight, I had a chance to email you all to your city emails, a uh, statement from Sue McCormick, CEO of Great Lakes Water Authority, which uh, gave a little bit more background than, than perhaps we have seen uh, up to this point. So it's definitely worth a read. Craig, welcome back. He's actually gonna share it with the public here in just a little bit. And um, we're gonna talk a little bit about tonight about how many people have, we've actually uh, have signed up for, uh, for FEMA reimbursement, which I think is over 1,300 now. So there's been a lot of work done in the last week and uh, then we'll try to answer any questions as the meeting moves forward. So with that, I'm Council President, I'm gonna kick it over to uh, Deputy Mayor Mike Reddy. MJ. Thanks, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, as the Mayor stated, um, we're gonna give a comprehensive review of 
the storm response up to this point. Um, I'm just going to kind of run through um, just some bullet points of what the members, uh, our department head members and members of our emergency management team that are on the meeting tonight are going to go through. So as they go through their uh, responses and information, if there's some things that are missed, I'll certainly um, uh, add those at the end of their comments. So council and the residents are aware of all the things that we are doing and what we have done up to this point. So again, uh, the members that are on here tonight are department heads along with our emergency management team. Um, so just to give a, 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 pre, a, a brief bullet point summary, and then again, um, we'll turn it over to the department heads to get more in depth. But just so the council's aware and the residents are aware that, uh, as the mayor stated, that this started Friday. Um, as, as immediately as soon as we discovered the significance of the storm event, um, the mayor instructed us to enact the, the city's emergency management team. Um, when that happens, we contact uh, the members of the emergency management team. Uh, in this case, it was Saturday morning, so uh, the mayor and I were on site, uh, actually on the Newburgh Road closing. Newburgh Road closing when we started contacting the members via phone and text on our cell phones on site. Um, one of the first members that we were contacting, and this is all outside of what DPS's operations was during the emergency storm. DPS was actively engaged starting Friday and continued their emergency operations. So these are the, some of the things that we did outside of what DPS was currently doing. Um, as you know, they were responding in the beginning to uh, calls for basement backups, flooded streets, roads, road closures, and, and all those things. And in a little bit, uh, Ramsey's going to give a, a, a very good overview of the city's system and, and how, it, how it works. And then uh, he'll turn it back to me, and then we'll turn it over to Doug Morton. He's going to get an in-depth detail of what our city crews or DPS crews have been doing since the event started and what we're continuing to do. Uh, so some of the things uh, we're going to cover, again, outside of the DPS operations was um, once we enacted the emergency management team, um, procurement uh, operations were put into effect. Evan Adams was contacted. He's the city's purchasing director and controller and, and a member of the management team. Uh, he's going to talk about how uh, on Saturday morning he started to get us um, all the required supplies we needed to uh, assist the residents with sanitation and other things. Um, along with that, the city um, put together some information care packets where we assembled those here at City Hall and we distributed those to the residents. Um, and inside those care packets were gloves, masks, scrub brushes, forms, uh, both forms, the FEMA reimbursement form and the city insurance form through MMMRA. Um, the fire chief's going to be getting more in depth on the FEMA form and what that consists of. Um, and we were also assembling sanitary cleanup kits um, that we distributed to the residents. And again, Devin Adams will get more in depth on those. Um, so further things that we did is we contacted our trash hauler, uh, knowing that we were going to have a lot of debris that we were going to have to remove from the streets. Um, and contacting them, we told them immediately we were going to need um, their personnel um, as much as they can get them to us. We're gonna need packer trucks. We were gonna need um, all the debris cleaned up that you've been seeing out on the street uh, beyond their normal course of action and duties. So when we contacted them, we told them that they need to maintain their normal trash operations along with the emergency debris removal from the storm event. Um, so with that, we also ordered extra roll-off dumpsters and we had them strategic, strategically located throughout the city and those will be uh, explained further in detail from Doug from DPS. Um, we also uh, secured uh, later dumping hours to the landfill so we can run our packer trucks later in the evening. Um, with this large amount of debris, they fill up quick. So we were able to secure longer uh, or longer hours for uh, them to be able to uh, take the stuff to the landfill. Um, we addressed normal bulk pickup operations. We addressed storm event pickup operations. We addressed additional curbside pickup. We suspended the normal uh, bulk pickup operations to where residents didn't have to call or email or request through priority bulk pickup. We, everybody were just asking the residents just to put it out on the street. However, if it's not part of the storm event, we're just asking that you be patient and hold your bulk items if you can until we're done 
picking up the emergency storm event items. Uh, some of the other things that we did is we contacted neighborhood services so that they wouldn't be out actively enforcing their normal uh, debris complaints um, and then getting those confused with the storm event. So uh, right now, everything that's at the, at the curb is considered part of the storm event so that they're not out issuing citations and doing those things. And they were now assisting and they're directly involved with all the storm related events. Uh, we contacted our chief inspector, Mr. Deal, along with Ramsey to go over any local road projects that we may have starting uh, in the affected areas so that we're not doing road construction on city road projects in the affected areas so we can get in there again, get the debris removed and allow the residents to uh, get their debris out and get it to the curb. Uh, some of the other things we did is we got the up the website uh, used as an information uh, gathering place for the residents. Uh, Craig Brown is going to go into more detail of all the things we use the city's website for during the storm event. Um, again, we ordered all the dumpsters we could get um, through our trash hauler and they're actively working um, throughout the night and they have been since it started through the evening hours and DPS again will discuss their efforts and operations a little further but uh, they have suspended all normal other D DPS activities. Examples would be cutting the parks, cutting the right of ways, uh, emptying the trash in the parks, um, you know, uh, filling potholes. Right now, they are just on the emergency events related to the storm event. So you may see some other things not being done by DPS, but all of our forces are uh, focused on the storm event. And then once the storm event is done, we'll uh, reposition re, uh, the forces back to the normal operations of DPS. Uh, as the mayor stated earlier, uh, we assisted over 1,300 residents in the last two days uh, on the phone in helping them fill out their FEMA forms. Um, this was sometimes a confusing form for them um, outside of the city's normal insurance form. So we assisted, again, over 1,300 residents with completing those forms, and those have been submitted to the fire chief. We'll talk, again, more in depth on those. Uh, Ramsey's going to also talk about the closing of Newburgh Road and what we're doing there. And then a um, couple other quick things before I turn it over to Ramsey is the city is currently working with our homebound disabled residents. Uh, Vic is in charge of our special teams on that. Um, some of our seniors that, that live by themselves that are, are homebound and disabled are, are, were unable to retrieve items from their, from their basement. So Vic's out assisting those residents with those emergency needs as we speak. And um, again, all non-storm related activities at DPS have stopped. They're only focused on the emergency and the storm event. So there will be some other things that we're gonna discuss. And then as the department heads and our emergency management team go over those, um, we may be adding some additional information. So with that, the first member of our emergency management team will be Ramsey, and he's gonna go over a in-depth uh, full, uh, full scope with the wood of our system. Ramsey, if you could start, please. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, on June 25th and 26th, we had a 19-hour storm event. Most intense, as you know, was between 11 p.m. and 2.30 a.m. Approximately six inches of rain has fallen in the, re in the region in Southeast Michigan. And, and dependent on the location, this is comparable to 200-year to 500-year storm which is a very intense storm. And as you know, when I say 200 year storm, that the, the statistically the storm should happen once in 200 years or once every 500 year. And, and, and these storms right now, they're more frequent and, and, uh, and we see them, it seems like every uh, other year right now. Uh, all storm water and sanitary sewer systems in this area from Detroit to Ann Arbor got overwhelmed with the amount of water falling in short period of time. Uh, the PW crews were called in about midnight on Friday night at 12 a.m. Saturday morning to follow up on road flooding and basement flooding complaints. And, and, and so we had the crews working through the night and then through the day on Saturday. And then they came back and then worked again on Sunday and, and, and they're still working long hours every day since, since that storm. Uh, Newburgh Bridge stormwater pumps 
had had the power the, had power surge during that event and it tripped in the early morning hours and water reached approximately eight feet under the bridge. And, and we had about four cars that were submerged in water under the bridge. Uh, DPW crews got the pumps at the bridge working around 7 a.m. And I wanna stress that those pumps are for storm water. They're not for sanitary uh, water or they're not like, like for wastewater. Those, those pumps under the bridge because of, of the under a pass there, we cannot have the water flow by gravity. So this is why we had those pumps in that area to pump the water that goes through the catch basin, through a water well and pump it into the storm sewer and eventually to the Rouge River. So when we had those, those uh, pumps working at, uh, at I believe 7 a.m. in the morning, then the water started receding and within hours, we cleared all the water from under the bridge. Uh, that also we discovered at, on Newburgh that, that we had a, our 24 inches sewer, sanitary sewer, and the east side of Newburgh, north of the bridge, has a breach. And this is again because of the intensity of the water, because all the storm sewer systems are filled and they are full and they are overflowing all over the region. So the water was backing up and, and it's just a breach at that location, which is about 100 feet north of the bridge and it was flowing diluted water into the Newburg Road and, and eventually we have pumped it out. Uh, the, the, uh, we called our emergency contractor at the time and to clean and inspect the sewer for us and make the proper repairs. Uh, so far he cleared significant debris as a result of the storm back up and the sewer is flowing now at approximately two thirds full. So, so we cleared so much debris right now, it's flowing. And, and then what we need to do though, we need to televise that system when the water recedes almost to about a couple inches or down to the invert elevation. So we could as assess to see any damage to the sewer or any damage to the manholes that are connected out there. So we're inspecting the sewer in that area all the way from Palmer to uh, uh, Cherry Hill. And, and then from what we can see right now, because the sewer is flowing, that we could have just some repairs right at the point of a, bre bre a breaching point, which is about a hundred foot north of, of the bridge at that area. And, and uh, Newburg Road was closed Saturday and Sunday, and we reopened it to vehic vehicular traffic with one northbound lane and the two southbound lane on Monday afternoon. And, and we'll keep that, that uh, traffic control until we make the proper repairs to our sanitary sewer. I, I must mention that, that our system, sanitary system in the, in the city of Westland has a 20 connection to the Rouge Valley sewage disposal system. And this is only one of 20. So, so the city is divided into districts and I'll go there and I'll go into details how the sewer system works in the city of Westland. Uh, by the end of the day, on Saturday, we had all road flooding throughout the city were cleared and DPS were following on basement backup complaints Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, since Saturday morning, all DPS staff have been working on flood damage control at, at long hours. I'm not going to count the hours and say 10 or 12 hours. They've been working long hours on a daily basis and they had been working uh, all men and women and kudos to them that they've been following up on complaints and following up, you know, on, on clearing debris and, and clearing uh, flood damaged furniture and items and, and, and throughout the week. So we started Monday morning doing the clearing and, and following up on what's remaining from the complaints. And, and we cleared, I could say about 60 to 70 percent of our debris have, have been cleared and we brought them up to the DPS site. And and, uh, and and we'll go in details in that, that Hawthorne Valley, the Hawthorne area there, where it is like transfer station. Uh, we, have, we have also, by DPS crews, have also been distributing uh, sanitizing packets to our residents. And, and we are planning on working this week and next week until all city streets are clear 
and our sanitary system are in, in good condition and back flowing. And, and again, this is under dry weather event or under normal conditions. And Doug, he will explain in, in details about the DPS operation that he was supervising all this week and on the, through the weekend. Also, we have uh, issued notices to our contractors, as MJ said, to stop working all neighborhood construction and, and all neighborhood uh, streets and, and uh, all construction has been stopped. Uh, today, we had uh, our contractor, which is on Newburg Road, he, he did some paving. And again, this project is an MDOT project. So more or less, even though it is on a major city street, but it is controlled by, by MDOT in, in, in Wayne County. So, so they did the paving of the curb lanes today. And then hopefully next week, they could switch the traffic and we'll continue that project there. But otherwise, all neighborhood projects have been stopped. Uh, now, let me let me summarize our sanitary sewer system, which is, it's, it's, it's a little complicated, but I will try to simplify it as much as I could. Watsland sanitary sewer system is a part of the Rouge Valley sewage disposal system. And the Rouge Valley sewage, uh, sewage disposal system has about 12 cities that they contribute sanitary flows to it. The cities are Novi, Plymouth, Northville, cities, not the townships, Garden City, Livonia, Westland, Radford, Dearborn Heights, Van Buren Township, part of Van Buren Township, and part of Ram Romulus, and Wayne, and the city of Inkster. This sanitary sewer is divided into two, two interceptor sewers, which is the Middle Rouge sewer and, and the Lower Rouge sewer. The Lower Rouge sewer starts at Hannon and Michigan Avenue and flows along the Rouge River all the way to about Evergreen and Ford Road in the city of Dearborn. The Middle Rouge interceptor starts in the city of Novi around Eight Mile and Sheldon Road, then flows south to Newburgh Road and then flows along Heinz Drive, again, all the way to Ford Road and Evergreen where they will meet and then pump all their, their flows into the GLWA or the DWCD interceptor and go to a treatment plant in Zug Island by the Rouge River and I-75. So that sewer, when it starts at the far west end of it, it starts out with about like 40 inches diameter and ends up with about 80 inches diameter through the Wayne County system. And then it empties into 120 inches diameter at the GLWA. And so just think about 120 inches, which is 10 feet, and it was overwhelmed and it was full and it was discharging raw diluted sewage to the Rouge River. From, from what we know right now and from what the, those reports that we got, that, that that system has discharged over 200 million gallons of raw diluted sewage to the Rouge River during that event. So, so this is why when we say the sewer system was overwhelmed, and this is the reason why, and then when you have a 200 and 300 year storm and that system was designed for a 10 year, one hour storm, this is, this is why we have the system that's overwhelmed and we have all that, those backups. Uh, the, 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 if you remember about two years ago, we came in front of you and we explained uh, the, the, the improvements that are, we are doing to the system through the Rouge Valley Sewage Disposal System, which is, a, excuse me, again, owned and operated by Wayne County. And all of us, we own a purchase, we call it purchase capacity. So we have about 450 cubic foot second in the capacity of that sewer, which is the maximum allowable flow limit during a dry weather event. And the city of Westland owns about 16 to 18% in that capacity. And the rest of it through all, all these cities that they contribute these flows to that sewer. So, so that sewer, we know it's, it's, been, it's, it's about 100 years old and it needs improvement. It's undersized, especially during wet weather events. And plus with all the developments we had the past few years, then, then they need improvements. So when we came in front of you about two years ago, the city council have passed a unanimous 
uh, resolution or unanimous approval to approve, we call it the short-term corrective action plan and the long-term corrective action plan for that sewer. So, so we could have an adequate capacity in it in the future and not exceed it during storm sewer events or rain events. The, the short-term short -term corrective action plan is a five-year plan. And, and the council approved about $2 million a year starting in 2019 through 2023. So this is about $10 million just for the city of Westland to just improve that sewer but with the short-term corrective action plan, which is, we call it, tightening the system and, and making the system a drier. In other words, eliminates the inflow and infiltration from the groundwater and the, from the surface water and this is why the system is overwhelmed during rain events. So after, after we do that, then the county and our engineers, the county engineers, then they will, they will do, they call it the project performance certification where they will measure the flows and see if we met our capacity there during, you know, after we did those, those temporary improvements or those short-term improvements. And from what we know right now, and, and uh, Jim, the city attorney, he's been involved in that for uh, how many years, Jim? About 30 years, I guess, if not longer than that. I think 40 years, back to the 70s, Judge Fikens, right? So, so this, is, this is how long that project has been going on. I spent most of my career, I spent it, you know, working on that project. And I think I will retire and that project is still going on. So, so after the short-term corrective action pl plan is done, then they will do, they will see if there is some more flows that they have to equalize. And this is where we could, we can see that there will be equalization basins that are built specifically in Westland and in Livonia. Those are the biggest, the largest contributors to the system. This is to equalize the flows after rain events. What I mean by that, during rain events such as this one, rather than backing up raw sewage in the river or backing up in basements, we pump those sewer, those, those flows into the basins, hold them for about 24 hours, then discharge them back. Again, it's, it's a complicated system, but we've been working on it. And, and, and uh, this is gonna be going for the next at least eight years. And in, in, in our city too, this is to tell you what we're doing on our end to, for our local system where we have over 300 feet of sewers in the city. We have been doing for the past couple of years, two or three years, we have been doing, if you remember, slip lining projects in our, in our uh, neighborhoods. So, so we started those projects about three years ago and, and the city council have been approving close to $2 million a year of these projects a year to dry up that system to prevent those flows, those wet weather flows or those groundwater flows to go into the system. So, so those projects will continue and we approve the five-year CIP through the council this year. And we have about $2 million in this year. We're gonna have another $2 million over the next few years. And, and this is at least on our end and, and cities are doing that at the same time. So again, Westland has 20 connections to the system, to the RVSDS and only two pump stations. We don't have a pump stations all over the city. The two pump stations that we have in the city of Westland is at the south end at Annapolis and Middle Belt and at Annapolis and Inkster. And those pump stations are fairly new. And the way why we do the pump station, because most of our flows, they, they just flow through gravity. The south end, they cannot flow through gravity to come to Michigan Avenue. So the Michigan Avenue interceptor is higher than, than the areas at the South End. This is why we bring them to those pump station and we just pump them through a, a force main to Michigan Avenue and Inksa Road. And this is where the interceptor for Wayne County goes to the city of Detroit to the WSD. And, and, uh, and from what we saw during the rain event, those pump stations, they operated as designed. And, and again, we monitor these pump stations through a SCADA system. The foreman, they have, the, anytime they, get, they, they have a trip or anything, they'll get a signal for it and will follow up on repairs. And thank God those pump stations and then those pumps, they did not trip 
or they did not, we did not lose power during that rain event. So we did not have a pump failure in the city of Westland. This is due to our sanitary sewer system. The only pump that, that stopped, again, this is for the Newburgh Road Bridge, which was for storm sewer system. And, and uh, that's, that's uh, all I have for now, MJ, and, and I'll uh, get back to you. Thank you, Ramsey. Thanks, Council President. Um, our water and super superintendent, Doug Morton, is having an audio problem. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to Devin. And if we can't get Doug's audio fixed, um, I'll update Council and the residents on um, the operations of what DPS has been doing. Uh, Ramsey, Doug, and I have been working hand in hand the last six days. So um, we can certainly handle the update if Doug can't get his audio fixed. So, Devin, if you could please update on the procurement uh, issues that we started first thing Saturday morning. Yep, sure will. Hello, everybody. Thank you for allowing me an opportunity to speak tonight. As the deputy mayor mentioned, I wanted to update all residents on the various supplies that we acquired to help mitigate some of the stressors that was caused by last week's storm. On an emergency basis, the city ordered and took delivery of 680 gallons of disinfectant solution and hundreds of brooms, of uh, push brooms. Each gallon of disinfectant can be watered down into over 50 gallons of usable cleaning solution. The products provided will help destroy pathogenic and odor causing bacteria and viruses that result from standing water. The push brooms can have many functions. One of the primary uses should be to spread the cleaning solution on the floor to help sanitize the surfaces. Within the care packets that the deputy mayor mentioned earlier, we have provided residents and also procured masks and gloves to, to help clean safely. And all the products referenced are currently being distributed door to door to those in need. And of course, should the residents wish to pick up these products directly at City Hall, we can of course accommodate that as well. Um, and as kind of already mentioned, additionally, the city collaborated with various waste management companies to provide roll-off containers at our DPS yard, which is located at 37137 Marquette Street. These containers give able residents a place to transport and dispose of items that are unrecoverable as a, lot, as a result of the heavy rainfall. And then lastly, residents impacted by the storm can also put all unrecoverable items at the curb at any time, and it will be picked up by our trash hauler. And as the deputy mayor mentioned, there's no need for residents to call and schedule a special pickup for the flood uh, related debris as the haulers will be working the neighborhoods and monitoring items at the curb continuously. That's all I had for now. And thank you guys. Thank you, Devin. Um, and city council, uh, some of the couple of things that uh, Devin didn't get a chance to mention is that uh, he worked um, every one of our, our, our local hardware stores um, on Saturday to try to get as many supplies as we could, uh, knowing that the region was facing the emergency that it was facing. facing we know that those supplies drop quick. So uh, Devin jumped right into action as part of our emergency management team, procured the, the amount of supplies we needed to get through. And we currently have a stock of those supplies, as was mentioned, and the residents, uh, we will deliver those to the residents. And I'm gonna turn it to Craig Brown next He's going to talk about the website and the communications and also uh, the phone numbers and stuff that those folks, the residents that still need the materials can contact us uh, after hours and be able to get that stuff. And again, DPS, uh, along with uh, other city uh, staff members, will be delivering those um, sanitizing materials and care packets um, until the storm event is finished. So uh, we're going to turn it over to Craig Brown, the IT director. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so with this event, um, I was reached out to along with Craig Welkenbach to provide messaging for the residents on where they can get information about what was going on, get assistance, let us know what they need. Um, it starts with our website. The, the city website is our main clearinghouse for information for the city. It's pretty comprehensive about things. Um, on the website, we immediately put out a message in the alert bar at the top of every page on the website. Um, speaking about the storm damage um, and uh, being able to put debris out onto the curb without having to contact the city. Um, as we got more information about the storm, we created a uh, news item on the main page. So it's right really big on the main page. You can't miss it. 
that provides a lot more information at the, about the storm. And as information became available to us, we've been adding it to the website um, in that news story. Um, in the news story, there's information on how to um, assist you with cleaning um, anything that was damaged, um, any type of backups in your basement. There's a bunch of tips in there. There's um, frequently asked questions related to the storm damage and you know why it happened, things along those lines. Uh, most importantly for the reds, so it's a it's an opportunity for them to reach out to us. Uh, we created an email. Um, address for residents, storm damage at cityofwestland.com, that they could send us the forms um, for their um, for their FEMA damage assessments. Um, we also provided the two forms for the residents that they would need on our website. Uh, the FEMA assessment form is a fillable electronic form that as soon as the resident fills it out, it automatically gets sent over to our um, FEMA um, coordinator, which is Chief Morris and his staff. Um, so we can get information to really see the scope of what was going on and provided information to, to FEMA, the county, the state. Um, additionally, we also added the um, storm damage incident claim form or MMRMA on our website. That again is also a fillable form, but that one you have to download and you have to fill it out and then you can either email it back to the city's finance department or you can uh, drop it off at city hall and so we can get that process started for you also. So we tried to make sure that this, these items were up on their website as quickly as possible. Um, Craig Welkenbach and his team using social media communicate that these items are available to the residents. Uh, we also created a print, uh, um, these forms is in, in a printed format, so residents who don't have access to computers can pick them up at any of our city buildings, uh, Jefferson Barnes, the, the police department, Senior Resource Center, City Hall. So we try to make it as, as available as possible to everybody. Um, going along with that, we also added um, ways for residents to get more information through our phone systems. Um, so. A resident can call our DPS main line, which is 734-728-1770. Uh, uh, and select option seven, which is a new option that we add specifically for this event. So they can leave a message after hours um, for our staff to let us know what they need and what's going on. Um, during regular business hours, you can call the DPS main line and talk to staff there. You can contact uh, Mayor Wild's office and talk to his staff there. And we are also trying, when we get these phone calls, we're returning them the message. We return it as quickly as possible to provide this information um, to the residents. So quite a few um, staff members at State Hall have been shanghaied into making sure that we're communicating to the residents as quickly as possible. So. We've been pulling staff from other departments to assist with this project to make sure that we're taking care of the residents in a quick and timely fashion, making sure that we're hearing what they need and we're getting it to them. So that's that's the, the extent of what we've been doing in terms of the website is making sure the information is there as the information changes. We're, we're changing it as more stuff becomes available, we're adding to it. And anything that we can do to get the message out to the residents and as many platforms as we can, we're trying to do it between myself and WLND um, community relations. MJ? Thank you, Craig. And can you just please, once again, um, throw up the uh, website, the email, and the phone number so the residents here again? Sure. The website is www.cityofwestland.com. It's right on the main page. You can't miss it. There's also an alert bar at the top of every page on the website that will take you to the news story also. The email address is stormdamage all one word, at cityofwestland.com. And then the phone number for after hours communication would be 734-728-1770, option seven. Thanks, Craig. Mm -hmm. Okay, next we're going to uh, turn it over to the fire chief, uh, Jim Morris, who's gonna um, talk about, uh, again, the we, we processed over 1,300 of the FEMA forms, um, as you council knows and the residents uh, know or haven't heard, uh, the state, uh, the governor 
declared a state of an emergency, which uh, enacted FEMA. Um, so there's a chance for FEMA reimbursement. Uh, with that, though, if uh, the residents uh, haven't dealt with FEMA before, there is a pretty quick time turnaround on the submittal of the FEMA forms. Um, and the fire chief can talk about that. But if we go past the um, submittal date, which it might've even been uh, this evening at 5 p.m. might've been the cutoff. Um, I know in talking with the mayor earlier, he was gonna reach out to his uh, state and federal contacts to see if, if we have more forms that need to be submitted, um, if we were able to uh, add those as an addendum. Um, uh, early next week, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, they'll work with uh, the mayor and, and us on doing that. So, uh, Chief, if you can update the council and the residents on the FEMA forms. Absolutely. Thank you, MJ. Uh, yes, regarding the timeline, I think they are going to be accepting some later submittals uh, due to the short time frame. And obviously, we're going to have some people who were on vacation and came back and seen some damage and are going to need to submit their paperwork as well. So as the emergency manager, I have been uh, the point of contact with the county, similarly to uh, the point of contact for the pandemic response and the COVID-19 information that's been relayed at various emergency manager meetings for that response. Uh, I attend the daily updates all this week and uh, through these emergency manager meetings, uh, learned that my office is collecting these forms for submittal to try to give the county a real high level view of all the damage that took place in the city of Westland. Uh, basically what they're gonna do is take these forms and get an idea of the extent of the damage on the form itself. It allows the residents to fill out some detailed information and we'll package that together and submit that to the county for their uh, larger submittal to FEMA. Um, also, uh, the county has stated they're put together some cleanup kits as well. Uh, in the past for the pandemic response, they gave us some PPE that we would routinely pick up. So we put in a request and uh, you can go down and pick up these, these supplies. Uh, similar to what we have, their cleanup kit contains a push broom, a mops and squeegees, uh, cleaning supplies, bleach, masks and sponges, rags, uh, ropes and hangers for uh, trying to dry some things out. So uh, we have a request in for those right now. They had about 6,000 that they had ready and they anticipate having a little bit over 10,000 available. So as the request comes in, they are filling those and they will contact me and we'll go down and pick those up immediately. Uh, the boxes for these are a little bit cumbersome. They say there's about 80 on a pallet and the pallets themselves are about six and a half feet tall. So won't we'll just be driving down and pick them up. They're quite cumbersome, even though they are light. Um, FEMA has mentioned that they will be coming out for the local municipalities uh, next week. Looks like they're going to aim for the 7th to try to do some on-site damage assessment. Uh, they don't know the exact time frame. They'll be visit visiting each city. They're going to try to keep everybody posted and give them a heads up as far as timelines regarding that. But obviously, everything in such a short time frame. So they're expecting a little bit of delays on their side as well. Uh, but we are collecting and going to submit all the damage assessment forms. The hard copies we're picking up from City Hall. Uh, the storm damage website, storm damage at cityofwestland.com. We're monitoring that email. Uh, there was over 500 submissions uh, just as of 4 p.m. today. And we'll have those all packaged up uh, to deliver to make sure that we get uh, consideration for the uh, federal response. MJ? Thank you, Chief. Um, uh, before we turn it over to Steve Smith um, and to go over some of the financial pieces, um, we're still having audio problems with uh, Doug Morton, our water and super superintendent. So I think Ramsey and I can cover um, what DPS is currently doing um, and what we're doing about the debris removal and some other things. So if we get Doug's audio working, we'll get him on. His video is working, but unfortunately he's in the field right now out on the streets, so we can't get his audio. So some of the things, uh, again, that that was covered earlier, but to recap and to, to kind of talk about one of the biggest issues DPS is dealing with now is uh, all the contaminated debris removal. So again, as we mentioned, we, we called in um, um, our trash haulers to get as, uh, the packers uh, running as, as much as they can between normal operations and extra operations. 
Um, we strategically positioned some dumpsters um, at fire station number three at the beginning of the storm event. Uh, once we got the bulk uh, items in that uh, area cleaned up, we then moved uh, all the uh, ex extra dumpsters to the Hawthorne Valley, the old Hawthorne Valley golf site, uh, and also the DPS yard. Um, we are currently uh, hauling um, DPS. This is not what uh, Priority is currently hauling. Uh, they're taking their stuff uh, from their packers and stuff to the landfill and then back and forth. But just what DPS is picking up um, right now from the north end of town, instead of them having to uh, try to haul all their equipment, pick up that debris and, and, and go all the way across town to put it in the DPS yard, uh, we, we placed uh, four roll-off dumpsters at the Hawthorne Valley site. Uh, which is the city site, if it's, it's a safe and secured site. And we're using that, as, as Ramsey said, as a mini transfer site. Uh, what DPS is doing is with, you've seen them out on the streets with front end loaders, dump trucks, trailers, pickup trucks, um, skidsters, just about any vehicle we have, they're using it to pick up debris. Um, and to expedite that debris removal, to get it off the residents' front yards, uh, we know we got the holiday weekend coming up. So again, we're, we're, we're trying to do the best we can as quickly as we can and to get that debris off the streets so our kids can be playing safe over the holiday weekend. Our families could be out front enjoying their holiday weekend and getting that debris removed from the streets and over to those dumpsters. Uh, at, the point, at that point, when they, they get over to Hawthorne, those dumpsters fill up real quick. Then we got to wait for um, either Republic or Priority to pick those dumpsters up, uh, empty those dumpsters and bring them back. And, their operations are, are tasked to the max right now because they're dealing with all their other clients and all the other cities that are involved with the storm event. So um, they're working with us as best they can. So we will continue to use um, DPS uh, as, a, as a transfer site and also Hawthorne Valley as a transfer site until we get um, the majority of the North End cleaned up. Uh, as Ramsey mentioned, we've been doing a good job. 60 to 70 percent of the streets are being cleaned, um, but there is still uh, folks that are still cleaning out their basements, uh, they, they were gone, they come home, they find that uh, they had a, a, a water issue. So you will still see um, a large quantities of debris being, being taken to the curb. And again, that's why we got the DPS fully uh, helping us with the debris removal. Um, so again, uh, we'll be using Hawthorne as a transfer site um, until we get the North End cleaned up, uh, loading those into the dumpsters, getting them to landfill, and, and we'll also be using uh, DPS yard, which you'll see, uh, we have a lot of debris uh, outside of the dumpsters there, just so we can get the bulk of the debris off the front yards, so our families and our, our kids are safe for the Fourth of July weekend. Uh, DPS again, when when we say that they're not doing, they're, they're they're just focused on the storm operations. It doesn't mean that that, as we mentioned earlier, they're they're not cutting the grass and doing the normal things. But any storm related event, such as if if there's still a report of a basement backup, still a report of a water issue, they're responding to those. I don't want you to think that they're just picking up debris. So when we see storm related event, it's anything that's related to the storm. So debris removal, uh, if there's a water issue into a house, they're responding to those. Uh, they're still lifting uh, manholes and catch basins, checking those televising lines still. Uh, you'll see the jet trucks out still, you'll see the camera trucks out still. Uh, but the, the majority of the other operations uh, has been uh, halted and just in full force and debris removal and again, getting that material off the curbs into one of our transfer sites. Uh, and then um, we'll be having uh, our DPS employees who've been working around the clock, uh, continue to work around the clock until we have the majority of the bulk pickup stuff removed. And then we'll continue to run as many packers as we can to pick up the remaining debris and um, I know Steve Smith has contacted several other um, trash hauling companies to see if we can get additional packers uh, just so we can get the debris picked up. But as you see, if you turn on the news that uh, every community that's involved in this event is trying to get every resource they can. So we got a pretty good handle on it. We just ask that the folks be patient. Um, and if you don't, if you haven't had your debris picked up, um, probably by this weekend, um, if we just missed you, or again, if some of your neighbors put it out in the last few days, please call the number, uh, call us on the, or go on the website, um, use the storm damage email, 
call DPS's number, uh, call our office number, and we'll make sure that we get out there and get that debris removed. Um, we haven't forgot about you. We're just trying to tackle the large quantities that we're dealing with. And then again, we'll continue to have DPS running day and night um, through the holiday weekend. And then hopefully by uh, the beginning of next week, uh, we can get back to somewhat of a normal operations for our DPS, but we will keep tasking them into the debris removal. Um, and Ramsey, if I forgot anything, please just shoot me a text. Um, if not, we'll uh, turn it over to Steve Smith, who's going to talk about some of the financial impacts that the storm event has had. And then at that point, we'll turn it back over to the mayor, and then the mayor will do a, a summary at the end. Thanks, Council. Uh, thank you, and good evening, Council. Um, right now, we are tracking all of the costs uh, through one account number within the water fund. Uh, obviously, as this is still an ongoing event, all of the costs that I'll, I'll be talking about are estimated and are subject to change. Um, the sanitary kits that um, Devin was talking about earlier, uh, so far approximately 25,000 has been spent on that. Um, overtime for city workers, um, and Ramsey went over this a little bit. They worked last weekend, uh, many will work this weekend, and during the week they worked up until uh, it was dark out. So there's many overtime hours involved. Uh, we're estimating at this time about 150,000 in overtime costs. Um, there's also costs to assist the elderly, homebound, or disabled residents uh, that help, uh, help them clear out the debris from, from their house. Uh, we're estimating that cost to be about $50,000. Um, and as the deputy mayor mentioned, additional roll-off dumpsters located throughout the city uh, with pickup and drop-off to the landfill, about $25,000. Uh, additional curbside pickup by priority, uh, that's picking up the debris from the curb. Um, that's about 60,000 right now estimated. Um, there's gonna be additional landfill costs, um, you know, per ton, it's $28 per ton. Uh, we're estimating about $84,000 for those costs. Um, and also Ramsey touched uh, based on this, the Newburgh Road, uh, clean up in the storm sewer, uh, the initial estimates from 100,000 to half a million dollars. Now, obviously, you know, Ramsey said until the flows go down in that um, storm sewer, it's gonna be hard to tell right now what that cost will be. They, they need to televise and, and get down there with the cameras and, and see. But right now, a, a rough estimate is 100 to $500,000 for that. So with that in mind, uh, those totals estimate between just under half a million to just under 900,000. Um, you know, I would recommend if, if council wanted to, to authorize uh, a not to exceed number, um, because it is an ongoing event, there's gonna be some additional costs that are not identified here. Um, and if you wanna be safe, a um, million dollars for the storm cleanup, um, and like I said, as there's still activity going on, it, it's hard to put a, a, an exact number on it at, at this time. So that would be a recommendation. Um, and obviously the city is going to track these expenses as we move forward, uh, as the invoices start coming in and, and we'll update council with uh, the totals that we uh, get. So um, I'll turn it back over to Deputy Mayor in case uh, for anything that we have, might have missed. Uh, thank you, Steve. And uh, Council, um, those, the, the, the estimates that Steve gave, we should have a, a, a better understanding come Tuesday night for Tuesday night's council meeting. Um, those are, will, will most likely get us through the weekend until Tuesday. Um, and then we'll have a, a, a more detailed uh, expenditure uh, come Tuesday night. Uh, just one of the other things I'd like to add on, on the debris removal is um, at the DPS yard uh, after hours, we have roll off dumpsters outside of the fence over there. So if residents wanted to dispose of their own debris or if they had a bulk pickup item that they wanted to put at the curb but are, are, are helping us with the storm event, they wanted to dispose of that themselves they can take it to the, the uh, DPS yard and the dumpsters and the on, are on the outside of, of the recycle center over there. 
Um, again, you can put them at your curb, but if, if you wanted to uh, do that yourself, the dumpster's on the outside of the gate. Um, so, you, Council, you've heard from uh, um, the majority members of our emergency response team. Um, our, our folks are still out there working. Um, we're out there working right now. Um, superintendent's out on the field. When we get off the, the meeting tonight, uh, Ramsey and I will be back out on the field and um, along with the rest of a lot of our members of the emergency management team back out there. So um, again, if, you, if council has questions, um, as always, you can email us. Um, and then um, the, they have, we have been updating council. Uh, Ramsey has been updating council on a daily basis and we'll continue to do that during the storm event. And uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to the mayor. Okay. All right, well, well thank you, uh, MJ. Thank you, uh, department heads and council. I know that was pretty comprehensive, but it's been a pretty big event. And like I said, we wanted to try to use this as an opportunity to not only brief the council, but also to, to brief and educate the public a little bit too. Um, just the, the last couple of words before I, I kick it back to you, council president, is that um, obviously early on our major uh, concern was, was addressing houses that had water in the basement. And um, at this point, I think we've got that pretty well handled. So the, the major effort uh, right now and moving forward uh, throughout the holiday weekend and, and probably to the end of next week is getting the debris away from the curbs. Um, we do have some hardship areas where people are still trying to get things to the curb. And, and uh, MJ talked about how we're, we're handling those cases on a, on a one-off basis. Uh, but at the end of the day, the major thing is, is getting the stuff away from the curbs. And, and we've stretched priority. We've, we've reached into our relationship uh, with Republic. And remember, Council Republic uh, has the contract with us to handle uh, the, the stuff at our drop-off center. And we're trying to do everything we can to get that stuff off the street, including using our DPS guys, using whatever trailers and dump trucks that we have. Um, you've probably seen a couple of things uh, worth noting. The news. Uh, well, well, first of all, this event, uh, Detroit was majorly impacted, and, and uh, Dearborn was another city majorly impacted. Um, with the amount of homes that they're looking at in Detroit, uh, Mayor Duggan is their their team is they're they're reaching out and they're they're grabbing all the resources they can. So um, that's why one of the reasons we had Devin jump on those supplies early, but but now. Um, commodities like roll-off dumpsters and packer trucks are uh, becoming very, very scarce because, like MJ said, that you know why priority services us. They also service other communities, and and the other people that are in that business all have their customers that they have to take care of first. So uh, we are trying to uh, to utilize some other uh, sources for those, and and we'll we'll keep you posted on that. Um, the last thing I want to say about Detroit is uh, you probably heard some comments from Mayor Duggan that uh, he was going to be speaking with uh, the president uh, Thursday um, while he was in, uh, um, actually that was yesterday, while, while he was in uh, Traverse City. Um, the president has the ability to, uh, to free up emergency federal dollars uh, at the presidential level, and if he does that, um, I agree with Mayor Duggan is that's probably going to be the best opportunity for our residents to actually uh, receive uh, money back from the federal government in a short period of time. So I'm hoping that uh, between the pressure from uh, the city of Detroit, and I know our congressional delegation uh, has been very vocal as well. Um, we're going to continue uh, through the groups that I'm associated with through the conference of mayors and MML and Simcog and others to keep the pressure on. If we can get the president to allocate federal emergency dollars, I think that's going to be good news for all of us in Southeast Michigan. So that's something that I think we should all monitor because I think that will have uh, the biggest short-term effect for everybody that was affected. And with that, um, we'll kick it back to uh, you, Council President. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Administration, for your uh, long and in-depth uh, uh, presentation. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll move along. Uh, we will open up uh, citizen comments on the agenda. We have one agenda item. Uh, it's budgetary allocation for flood. That is the agenda item. Uh, so you have three minutes uh, to uh, go ahead and give your input on the agenda item. I will begin uh, first with uh, C. Broadbent. 
See Broadbent. Hi. Um, yes, this is Kathy Broadbent. Um, I actually am not sure if this is an agenda item or not. Um, it is related to the flood. It's with regard to the dumping of all the trash at Hawthorne Valley. How long is that going to be there? And what are you doing to mitigate the risk of rats? Mayor, would you want to answer all that during your time? Yeah, or what, what we could do, Council President, is there's going to be some questions if we want to uh, get the questions and then uh, we can uh, just go right through the list of questions and, and knock them all off at once. I agree. All right, Ms. Broadbent, is that all? The, the rats at Hawthorne Valley? That's it for now. Okay, thank you. Next, I have uh, last name Pruitt. Thank you. Hello, this is Pastor Edward Pruitt here. And I wanted to first thank Councilman Peter Hertzberg for seeing a problem, seeing a solution and moving forward on it. Uh, it's great to see the residents jump in to support and voice their concerns, especially through email. And a thank you goes out to the council members who have and will be supporting this needed uh, support. Uh, this crisis demonstrated a need to focus on the community and the community only. We are in a position where the community needs assistance and the mayor needs to have full abilities to meet the need. So I'm thankful that, that this measure has been put forth. Um, I do think that while I initially through email requested an increase from 200,000 to 500,000, I do support $1 million not to exceed um, emergency allocation and publicly written reviewable report. I'm thankful for the update and uh, from the administration and thankful for everyone who has worked diligently through this crisis. Uh, while I do have concerns regarding how the crisis was handled, this is not the time for it. Uh, we gotta focus on the community and getting the resources allocated. And so I'll save those, time, those questions for later. Uh, but I do have a question through the chair to whom can answer. Um, since there has not been an emergency allocation and since there has, wasn't a declaration of emergency called for the process of the charter, to have the ability to emergency spend and to enter into contracts, where did the money come from for everything spent thus far and or and promised to spend thus far as well? So through the chair. All set? Through the chair. Through the chair to whom can answer that question. Isn't that a process for rules, Roberts, of order that you follow through the chair? It is. Uh, I think they we, we talked about it. I think they're going to go ahead and answer that on the wrap up. But if, someone, that, but answer, like if someone likes to answer now, I, it, it's open. Council President, we're we, we've got that one down, and we're going to talk about Hawthorne Valley, and we're going to we're going to answer uh, Mr. Pruitt's uh, question as well. Okay. That is all my uh, my that is my question. All right. Thank you. Next, I have last name Sampy. Hello, this is Melissa Sampy. Thank you so much. Um, my comment actually is also in regards to Hawthorne Valley. Um, basically looking to see what the capacity or maybe you could speak on the capacity of uh, waste that can be stored there. And then also, can you um, discuss to say if waste capacity is reached, how or what is the next step and how it's handled? I'm sorry, the landfill. All set? Yes, and also to thank you so much to the DPS workers. I have been seeing them out. Um, they really have done a fun, phenomenal job. I mean, very fantastic. I know everyone's been working very hard. So I just wanted to also say thank you for your hard work and it definitely go, does not go unnoticed. Thank you. Next, I have a uh, phone number ending 017. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, Richard Graham from Westland and also with Move Westland Ford. Uh, just some comments, uh, you know, uh, really echoing, uh, I think, the, the last three uh, callers. Uh, first, you know, thank you to all uh, the workers, all the DPS workers, uh, all the people out there, you know, really in the front lines getting this uh, cleaned up. 
Uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, also want to uh, echo uh, the one comment. Thank you, uh, Councilman Herzberg, you know, for really forcing uh, this st special study session and really going around. Um, Council President Hart, who didn't seem to want to have it, uh, along with Team Wild. So I appreciate it, Councilman, Councilman Herzberg. And, and lastly, you know, regarding the Hawthorne Valley, uh, utterly amazing uh, that uh, any that this type of contaminated material uh, would be placed on placed at that location. Um, whoever came up with that um, is unbelievable. Um, there is no excuse for that, uh, especially how close all the residential areas are, and a DPS yard is an extra mile or two. So uh, we'll be interesting uh, interested to hear all the uh, all the excuses of why that site was picked especially when it's for sale. Um, and, and that's about it for now, but i um, really disappointed in council for not having a study session earlier and definitely Hawthorne Valley residents are highly upset with all that contaminated material there. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have, uh, I believe Janine. Hi, um, my name is Janine Geisler. I'm on, on Avondale. My question too was about Hawthorne Valley. With all the stuff going there for the dump, are we doing double the work, double the contaminant to our workers when the ultimate it needs to go to the dump yard? Um, that was my only question. I think we're doing double the work, double the exposure and the risk to the groundwaters and the wash off to our neighbors. So that was all, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other comment on the agenda? All right, we'll close citizens comments on the agenda, move to new business. New business. Item one, discussion, budgetary allocation for flood. Thank you. So as a reminder, this is a discussion item. Uh, so as a discussion item, it is open for discussion right now. Uh, since there was no supporting documentation beforehand, it's a little irregular, but not unheard of. Um, so we will go ahead and just start discussion with council. Uh, first hand up is from Councilman Godbout. Thanks. Uh, actually, so that we can have discussion, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the, we allocate or the council allocates up an amount not to exceed $1 million to handle the flood emergency, as well as waive the uh, charter provision requiring bids for uh, uh, materials over $5,000 for items related strictly to this storm emergency. Support, Mondo. We have a motion and support from Councilman Godbout and uh, uh, Council President Pro Temp uh, for $1 million uh, to be allocated and up to, to waive, but up to, excuse me, thank not you. Not to exceed. Not to exceed $1 million uh, with uh, the bid process waiver uh, being granted for expenditures related directly to the storm, uh, the storm recovery. Uh, Councilman Godbout, did I properly explain your motion? Yes. Thank you. Uh, at this time, is there, uh, so I've got a couple hands up, so, but I got them from the Councilman Godbout, Council President for the temp. Uh, so you were the maker and supporter. Is there a discussion? I'll, yes. I'll do my comments later. Okay. I will, uh, uh, Council I got discussion, uh, Council President. Say again, Council President Pro Temp. I said I have discussion if you want to recognize me. Yeah, I am, you are being recognized at this time. Thank you, President Hart, and I apologize to uh, the residents I am on. I've been uh, taking some feverish notes. I'm out of town. Uh, my cameras, I'm having an issue with my camera as well. Um, but thank you to the mayor and his administration with that comprehensive update. It was, uh, did a great job of really showcasing what our team's been doing out there to assist and provide relief to our residents. Um, I've been seeing it on a daily basis when I was home, uh, seeing the trucks out there uh, till, till the wee hours of the night uh, doing, doing the work for the residents. So I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate you suspending all the non-essential work as well. So we did have all hands, all hands on deck to provide relief. Um, I also had a question about the landfill capacity, but I think it was asked during citizens' comments, so I won't ask that one. Um, the only other thing I would want to ask uh, through the chair to anyone in the administration, um, have we thought about uh, waiving any permit applications for a period of time 
uh, during this time, residents are going to want to, you know, get right to work to get uh, their houses remediated and, you know, and want to put an added burden on them for any additional permit fees. I'm not saying to do it for a year or anything like that, but maybe uh, the month of July, maybe the month of July and August. Uh, just through the chair of the administration and someone can answer that for me, please. Sure. Mayor? Yes, through the chair. Um, that's something that, that if council wants to deliberate, we can uh, certainly uh, talk maybe a little bit more about that on Tuesday night. Um, we can talk with uh, both the building department and the planning department to see uh, perhaps what types of uh, permits that, that people may pull for basement work or plumbing or some other things. And if, if council wanted to do that, um, there would be a little loss in revenue there. Would, the only thing we'd have to keep in mind too is that with our building department is that they work off of a, uh, a split on the revenue. So while I do think that we could waive the fee for it, I don't think that we would be able to waive uh, our cost for the inspections. Um, so we can we can dig into that a little bit more if it's something that you'd like like us to look at. Great, thank you very much. And we can talk further about this offline and then um, obviously Tuesday at the meeting. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, next hand up I have comes from Councilwoman Tasha Green. Thank you. Um, and thank you for providing council with that information. As to uh, Councilman Godbow's recommendation for uh, up to a million dollars, um, I am not in agreement with that uh, because it has been stated tonight that the cost could range between $500,000. Um, and I believe Steve said potentially up to 900,000, but at this point, there is nothing that states that our expenses will go that high. Uh, Dearborn, which is a city that is much larger than ours and who also um, experienced far more damage than the city of Westland, they experienced more water and more flooding. Um, their city council immediately had a special meeting the day after the flood and extended an amount of $500,000 in their city, which again has a larger population than we do and they experienced more damage than we did. And so um, the, the concern that I have is number one, Count, Councilman Gabau has requested that we waive the um, charter requirement that will require the mayor to get approval from city council for expenses over $5,000 and that we get open the checkbook to whomever these contractors may be and whatever decisions are made up to $1 million. Um, it is important to note and realize that the only reason that we are even having this special meeting today is that Councilman Hersberg requested via email almost a week ago, almost a full week ago, to have a special meeting so that we could come to the table and set aside uh, funding for this. At that time, he requested an initial amount of $200,000 with discussion on what would be needed. His request was ignored by the majority members of city council, as well as Mayor Weil, and there was no response given for multiple days. It was not until Councilman Herzberg, myself, and Councilman McDermott documented a demand that we have a special meeting to come to the table finally and discuss what is happening in our city so that we can provide updates to the residents who continue to call us with concerns and issues at their home sites that have not been addressed. Um, we did not receive, uh, we received very minimal uh, information from the mayor and was then encouraged to wait to receive any information until the next city council meeting while we are in a state of emergency throughout the entire metro area. And now Councilman Gabau, when we have the mayor who, did, who refused to give information, who refused to have a special meeting, who had to be forced into tonight's meeting just so that we can provide information to our residents, you all want to now waive his requirement to even get authorization for expenses over $5,000 when he wouldn't even have this meeting. And you wanna give him up to $1 million 
with no proof of what it's going to cost. We have cities that are, are higher, high, uh, with uh, higher populations than ours who started at 500,000, who, who are sitting at $500,000. I see no reasonable and sensible reason to open the checkbook to an administration who refused to communicate uh, openly and then allow him carte blanche to pick whatever contractors he wants to, whatever um, expenses, whether they make sense or not. Uh, there's been issues with um, tens and thousands of thousands of dollars that were recommended for plants in this city when we have more urgent matters um, that we had to, 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 to fight against. We also had to fight against cuts from the fire department that the mayor recommended. Um, and, 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 uh, while, and we had to force him to cut newsletters so that we didn't have to make cuts to the fire department. And you all want to give him a million dollars. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that. I would uh, be in support of approving $500,000 because that is the amount that we are confident that we may come in somewhere around as of today. We have nothing to document that we, we're going to go to a million dollars. And even if we do, I would be most comfortable with the mayor's administration having to come back to city council at the point that the $500,000 has been um, absorbed, come with a full report of what has been done with the money and what yet still needs to be done. And we can authorize additional funding at that time, which is not going to delay anything in our city. And I think it is irresponsible for us to say, let's waive what the charter says when he's already authorized all of this work, I don't know if you are clear on the fact that all of this work that the mayor did not clear with us, he didn't even send us the email and ask for a special um, accommodation. Can you respond to this email just to let me know that you saw it? Um, it's a, you know, we have a state of emergency. He has already expensed hundreds of thousands of dollars already and not even a word to city council. That's unacceptable. And it actually is illegal and against the constitution of our city. And now you wanna just let him do whatever he wants to do. And, and, and we had to force this meeting tonight. That's, that's insane. So wh 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 who are these contractors? The, the, the trash contract just raised our taxes and, and he um, recommended that with us paying for all these trucks. And it, it is insane what is happening in this city. I see no reason to approve more than $500,000 today and ask that the mayor and his administration give a full accounting to city council at the point of $500,000. And then if additional four to 500,000 is needed, we can easily get that done. But I'm not confident in the way, the one that this was handled for us to be ignored and having to go to the clerk and three council members force you all to the table to even update our community. And there was no update given to the community other than the meeting, or excuse me, the video that was posted to our WLND channel yesterday and uploaded on YouTube yesterday. But that was after Peter, Mike and I got together and forced, submitted written, a written demand for this meeting to take place. And then the, the mayor shot that video and put it online. So even that came after we had to force this meeting. It's unacceptable. I am not comfortable giving the mayor's administration a million dollars to do whatever they wanna do and pick all these contractors from God knows where. A lot of these city contractors are already donating to most of your campaigns. I'm the, 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 No, um, I, I, again, I'm, I'm in support of $500,000 and then you all come back to the table and um, let us know what has been done and what needs to be done with a, with a true number um, of what is yet outstanding, and then we reauthorize. Thank you. Councilman Guybell. Thanks. Uh, first, I'd, I'd like to uh, make a, an amendment to my motion that the uh, funds uh, being expended come from the water and sewer fund. Support as part of this uh, expenditure. All right, support, well, Lando. It's been supported by the supporter, so amendment noted. Okay, and uh, you know about some of the comments that have been made so far. Um, this is not, fortunately or unfortunately, this is not the first time 
Uh, I've experienced one of these events being on the council. Um, the administration did what they had to do to take care of the residents immediately. So uh, the fact that we're even having this meeting tonight, as you saw, most of these numbers are estimates. Uh, you know, originally the mayor had said he was going to have uh, details on Tuesday at our regular scheduled meeting. Obviously, uh, that wasn't satisfactory for uh, three council members and wanted to turn it into a political uh, statement. So that's that's why we're here this evening. So now there, there had been communications going out. There had been emails. There had been text messages. Uh, going out to keep council informed as to what was going on. Uh, and now we want to quiver. And we, we just heard Steve say that the, we didn't know what the, the big gotcha is what happens with the Newburgh Road uh, pump station. So rather than have to come back again, I mean, we wanted to do this today rather than on Tuesday. Uh, so now we want to uh, we want to hamstring the administration by having to come to us for approval on everything that they're going to buy, trying to take care of the residents uh, during an emergency situation. It's just ludicrous. Our job is not to run the day-to-day -day operations of the city. That's the function of the mayor and the administration. Our function is to make sure they have the resources to do so properly. So. With that, uh, you know, I'll leave my motion as it as it stands. Thank you, uh, Council President Pro Tem Londo. I see a hand up. Do you have a discussion? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, President Hart. Um, just a couple things to piggyback on. Uh, the Councilman Gobble did a great job of of recapping uh, the week's events and the communication that has went out. Um, you know, I went went by City Hall. I've talked to multiple directors, gotten updates as best as I could. But you know what? It's not my job to be in front of them. Uh, pestering them with questions when they're trying to provide relief to our residents. So a couple quick questions. I figure I'll get updated at a later date, which we are doing today. Um, and then the, the, uh, the emails uh, that the mayor sent out, Ramsey sent out and so on. Um, but, you know, they're doing a great job out there for us. I did want to mention, it was mentioned that Dearborn, uh, city of Dearborn allocated $500,000. Uh, that is true. Uh, and then they had another special meeting and allocated another $1.3 million dollars to make their total closer to $2 million, $1.8 million. So obviously they were affected um, uh, a lot worse than we were, uh, but they've put almost $2 million into relief funds right now. So um, I'll stand behind the, the support on this motion. I appreciate the, uh, the support from the uh, my colleagues. Councilwoman Tasha Green. Thank you. I just wanted to state for the record that um, in response to Councilman Godbow's allegation, uh, my uh, comment tonight has nothing to do with politics. Um, it is actually is in, in, in a response to city council not being um, even informed of what's going on, emails not being acknowledged, uh, not being responded to. And I'm not sure why there is a misperception that there's only one elected official in the city of Westland. We all serve the same constituents. We're all getting emails. We're all getting telephone calls. We're all getting Facebook messages from concerned residents with information that we cannot answer because we have not received any. And while I understand that there are certain people who have been supported by the mayor and endorsed and, you know, and they come to the table and um, are very supportive of what he wants to do, which is really nice. To, to open up a, a million dollar checkbook um, when we have not received any response from the mayor is irresponsible. And Dearborn, uh, as a matter of fact, was received the most amounts of um, damage to any city in this area. They were actually hit worse than the city of Detroit. Dearborn, um, uh, got the most uh, flood water and the difference between one of the differences between Dearborn and the city of Westland is that their officials took immediate action the day after the storm they came to the table and as was stated um, did what they had to do to the residents we had a council person who sent an email and asked for a special meeting 
the day after the storm, there was no response from these same council people who sit here tonight and want to award a million dollars to a mayor who has already started spending more money that he is not even authorized to spend. So again, this is nothing political. It is simply a checks and balances in terms of you've already violated the charter. You also did not uh, inform us of what was going on. We had to force you here tonight. If and when we get to the point of $500,000, what is the, the hardship of letting city council know what has transpired and what the plan is? It's actually a safeguard since most of us are not kept in the loop in terms of what's going on. And my position tonight is because I do care about the residents many of which have are continuing to call us even as of today with not only flood issues with um uh, uh the the lighting issues with dte also also answers that are questions that we cannot answer and so with the mis mismanagement of uh, millions of dollars in this city, according to my opinion, uh, contracts that are extremely alarming, selection of um, contractors who are affiliated with uh, elected officials. I would like city council to uh, be kept in the loop. And I think to just open up a million dollar checkbook and, and say, have at it, it is not the, the way to do it. And that is not um, micromanaging. That is actually doing our job. And, and, and actually not um, placing a friendship or allegiance above what we should be doing for our residents. Thank you. Councilman uh, McDermott. Good evening, thank you, Council President. Um, first and foremost, as a, someone who was affected by this, I wanna thank everybody who's uh, worked really hard and diligently in the city um, on the cleanup efforts. Uh, our DPS crew led by uh, Ramsey, Doug and uh, Hassan, um, you know, great effort helping out all the residents here. Um, I know I personally saw our facilities director, Vic Barra in my neighborhood, helping out residents one-on-one uh, -on -one personally with that. So thank you to the uh, DPS department, uh, the guys, uh, the men and women out there working really hard, everybody in the administration. Um, in regards to the motion at hand here, um, you know, I think that this is, as Councilman Godbout said, up to a million. It doesn't mean we're going to be spending every cent uh, of that money. We can obviously revisit as we know what the money is going to be allocated to and how it's going to be spent. Um, and also, I believe he mentioned that it's not going to go without council approval. It's just the bid process that normally is required in the charter itself is what we're approving to waive, not the fact that council uh, doesn't have any approval say whatsoever. So, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe that we are still going to have approval say on this if we approve this motion. Um, that is not something that we're acquiescing here or, or, or giving up here as well. Um, and then, you know, myself, this meeting for me isn't about politics. I, myself, Council Melanda, we were both affected homes during this. Um, I didn't post about this on Facebook or social media. I wasn't screaming for a, for a meeting for a week here. Um, you know, I signed on to the letter to have the meeting. Other communities like Dearborn had a meeting. It's not political for me. I, you can check my social media posts. I wasn't hammering, oh, we got to have a meeting or else. So, uh, but in regards to the motion um, here at hand, council is not giving up its authority to approve contracts. It's just that we're talking about the bid process for the contract. Thank you. Councilman Londo. Thanks, President Hart. Uh, I wanted to mention this during my last statement, but I missed it. Um, I just wanted to say too, um, as the residents may know or may not know, and obviously council knows uh, as we get our agenda packets, the council leadership did work with the administration to place this item that we were talking about tonight on Tuesday's agenda. Um, so we weren't not responding. We weren't not uh, wanting to uh, face the music, so to speak, as was said. Um, this item would have been on Tuesday's agenda, which would have gave us uh, time to get a better financial picture of what we really needed. Uh, as you can see, the numbers go, go up every day. Uh, originally, I heard a couple hundred houses. We've heard up to 1,300 houses now. And as Councilman McDermott said, my house is one of them. So we feel your pain. We're one of your neighbors. We, we're going through everything you're going through with us uh, are going through the same thing. So just wanted to stay for the record that the council leadership did work with the administration uh, to place an item on Tuesday's agenda uh, to approve funding for the flood relief. Thanks. Councilman Hersberg. Thank you. Um, I'll start by just addressing those last comments there. Uh, 
I'm glad to hear that you guys are working with the administration to do that. Unfortunately, you know, you mentioned getting texts and emails. I wasn't part of that. Um, nobody disseminated that information to the rest of council. And I think as the president and pro tem, uh, that should have been done, even if it is a work in progress, uh, I would have appreciated knowing a little bit earlier what was being worked on. Because when I sent out that email, I expected a reply either from the mayor or the president uh, saying why we should or should not have a meeting, but there was no opinion made whatsoever. Um, so I didn't get any text. I got one email from Ramsey, uh, which was specific just to a couple of small issues one day of the week. And I appreciated that update. Uh, in regards to this motion, I have a question through the chair to the city attorney. So at this point, uh, we've already spent some money and the bid process has not been waived. Uh, so how does that work with money already being spent? Was that legal without council approval? Uh, yes, the uh, items, uh, I don't have a detailed list of the items spent, but from what I heard, it was uh, uh, with existing vendors under existing contracts and with city employees on overtime. So certainly the uh, expenditure of things like uh, city overtime is not something that comes to the city council for outside bidding. Uh, asking Priority Waste or Republic, who are both existing vendors, to increase their level of effort uh, in the city is not a rebid item because they've already been bid and they're on city contracts. Uh, I believe even the TV work that was being done uh, and Newberg is probably with uh, the DPS director is shaking his head is with an existing contractor who's already been bid and is, is our C CTV uh, vendor. So I think there's a little too much focus on um, uh, vendors who haven't gone through a bid or a clearing process. And, and again, I, again, I don't have the exact details, but, it, but in those circumstances, uh, we generally, the city generally has a specific cost provision in the contract of how much you get charged for miles of this or tons of that. The landfill would be another good example of, we already have a contract in place with them and we have a fee schedule with them uh, related to tonnage. What's different here is this isn't normal uh, municipal waste that doesn't weigh much. This is all wet, heavy stuff. Uh, and so those roll off boxes are going in heavier than they would otherwise. So those cost increases are already factored into the contracts that you have. You don't expect to use them, but in this instance, uh, those contractors are relying on existing contracts. They're not working without a contract. They're there with a contract in place for which they're doing work. So I don't have a specific list of every vendor, but that's my initial reaction to the details I've heard this evening. Um, uh, that you've heard this evening about those types of vendors that are doing the emergency work, even as this meeting goes on in, in, in uh, uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Faso, and I appreciate you clearing that up. Uh, that's a question I got quite a bit, and I know uh, under the state of emergency, that certainly changes things. Um, again, you know, if an update had gone out, you know, to the entire council, uh, we may not have to have come here today. Um, regarding uh, Councilwoman Green's comments, I don't have a problem uh, starting with a smaller number and coming back. Um, you know, if, if there's something we need to act quickly on, uh, we're here today in a special meeting that was requested, you know, just a couple of days ago. Uh, there should be no issue with us coming to a special meeting to make an approval. Uh, that's the council's job is to be the check and balance. And I'd, I'd like to not see that bid process waived, especially for the full million at this point. Well, I'll come back if I got more comments, but I'm going to let Councilwoman Rutkowski go. See, she has her hand up. Councilwoman Rutkowski. Thank you, Council Member Herzberg. I appreciate that. Uh, I just wanted to extend my gratitude to all of our DPS uh, workers and our directors and, and administration that um, gave us an update today. I know it was a lot of work and I certainly appreciate you pausing um, what you've actively been working on to meet with us today to give us the, the um, larger overview. A um, million dollars seems like a lot, but when you do the math, it's, it's what it's showing. You know, we don't know the expense of the Newberg sewer um, yet. However, you know, our... Um, our professionals 
might have a, a better understanding of what's going to be needed to remedy that. And with the motion being an up to amount, um, I, I feel okay not tying their hands. Um, I feel like, you know, the administration acted swiftly. They procured the equipment that was needed for the residents. And, you know, this isn't the first time that there's been an emergency in our city. You know, just last year, uh, we had a server go down and the city acted on that. It didn't come before council before they repaired that. So, you know, I, I, I want to have faith in our, our directors and our employees that they're going to do everything possible to take care of our residents. And if making this uh, allocation today is going to allow them to continue to serve them and remedy their, these tragic things, then I will support that motion. But again, thank you for all the hard work. Uh, you know, it's not a fun job to be picking up other people's literal trash. So thank you so much. Appreciate you. Councilman Hersberg. Thank you. Yeah, I also wanna thank uh, the mayor and his staff for being here and for that update. Um, I, I, when I got here, I had a long list of questions and just about almost every single one of them was answered at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, it was really informative. I appreciate that. Um, so when this whole thing started, the biggest issue I had is that all we put out to the residents was a Facebook post uh, from the city of Westland. And I, I know I got, everybody got calls. I got quite a few calls from people who are not online, you know, and all I could tell them was uh, we, we haven't gotten a response yet and you should call city hall. And they did that and were able to get get it worked out. But we need to really be looking at doing Nixle alerts. Um, you know, I requested this meeting the beginning of this week and I think my intention was that we could get it Tuesday or Wednesday. We could get residents to come in, fill out the form, uh, get all the questions answered. You know, I have another issue with what's being done at Hawthorne Valley. Uh, We are moving this stuff twice. We're creating a disaster. You know, there was a comment that the property is safe and secure. Uh, it's nothing but safe and secure at Hawthorne Valley. Uh, if anybody wants to go there and check it out, it's wide open. Um, I've advocated to get that parking lot roped off. I've advocated to get it boarded up and it's continued to be a problem. And now it's wide open and uh, we have a temporary landfill going on in the parking lot. I have a huge problem with that, but I do have a couple of questions here before we vote on Godbout's motion. Um, you know, as I said, the Facebook post wasn't enough. We got 1,300 uh, that filled out the form. I would only estimate that that's about half. Definitely not everybody who flooded filled out the form with the city. Um, what, what numbers are we looking at getting from FEMA uh, per household that uh, filed those forms? Do we know that yet? Through the chair to finance? Sorry, uh, through the chair, it's just too early to tell if about any kind of number. Um, you know, this is just in the infant stages. I, I'm not sure the forms were due today. Um, I'm sure the chief's going to turn them in as, as, as soon as possible, but it's just really too early to tell at this point. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Mayor Wild. Okay. Well Thank you, Council President. Uh, I, I haven't said much. I want to give everybody a chance to talk, but I just thought there's just a couple things that that, that I felt I needed to uh, to clear up. Um, and then I wanted, we never answered those questions from the public earlier. So I'll try to do that real quick because a lot of the council comments were the same. Um, I'll start off just with Hawthorne Valley is that, that look, we, we understand that it's not ideal in a, in a situation like this, the biggest, the biggest thing our residents wanted was to get the stuff off the curb. Uh, when you start taking a look at where the, where the damage was, um, if like MJ said, if we try to take everything back to the DPS yard, uh, we lose time and we lose, uh, you know, it, it's, it's trips back and forth. Um, Hawthorne Valley, where it's at, um, is actually 
not in as close a proximity to residential homes as the DPS yard. Um, and at the end of the day, the Hawthorne Valley, um, it, it is screened from the street uh, and, and it is screened from the residents as far because of the golf course. And it's got a hard parking lot. The DPS yard is a dirt parking lot. So um, as far as using as, as a transfer site by putting this stuff there, it allowed us to get back in the neighborhoods quicker and it allows us to, to bring in heavy equipment, roll off dump boxes, front end loaders, where we can scoop the stuff up. My goal is to be in and out of there as quick as possible. We'll, we're gonna make sure that it's uh, cleaned up properly. And um, we're just gonna ask council to uh, be patient with us. Um, as far as um, the current money that's been spent, um, the city charter speaks to emergencies. emergencies and the city has, uh, a procurement policy that's got language in it for for uh, for emergency. So everything that's been done has been done in accordance with that. Um, at the end of the day, the supplies that we purchased, uh, um, sanitizer and brooms. Um, I think what we've purchased is sufficient. Now it looks like the county's going to have some stuff available too. Uh, at this point, we haven't taken any any of that into in the possession yet, but we will. So I think that we're pretty good on that. Uh, we're gonna have overtime. We're gonna have sanitation costs as far as tipping and uh, you know trucks and stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, really our, it looks like our biggest exposure at this point is uh, that Newburgh Road project, which was pointed out by Councilman Godbout. So um, if we dodge a bullet there, um, we're not gonna probably have to use half of the money that was talked about tonight. But at the end of the day, um, whatever council wants to approve, whatever level of transparency that you need or you want, we're gonna we're gonna comply with that um, to whatever you ask for plus. Um, but I'm really disappointed when when I hear council members say that you haven't been communicated to in the situation because while you were talking, I was I was looking through my my email system and. Um, this event started on Friday night and went into Saturday. You had an email for me at 646 on Saturday to all of you. Um, I know Ramsey updated everybody. Craig, welcome back, put out an update to the public on the city's Facebook page. Craig Brown put opened up a line of communications on the website. Uh, WLND has had information scrolling all along. It, Tuesday at 9.53 a.m., I gave you another update. Um, and in between that, I've sent you stuff that the governor has sent us. I've sent you stuff that that comes in, anything I thought that was related to you. Several of you um, were able to be part of the, the county uh, communications updates that they've had. So, and I've, I've seen all you guys walking around City Hall during the last week. So when you're there, I thought you were there to get information. So all these people that are on the call tonight, they're all at City Hall too. So um, to say you didn't get information, I, I, I just it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit right with me. And at the end of the day, council, you guys can call your own council meetings. You don't have to ask the mayor to have a council meeting. So um, to say that the mayor didn't agree to have a council meeting, that's not the way that the city was set up. That's not the way the charter was set up. So I take offense to that. So when it was said it was requested a week ago, well, a week ago was when this event started. So it couldn't have been requested a week ago. Well, like I said, I've updated you and I'll continue to update you. And at the end of the day, I encourage you to, you gotta keep yourself updated too. Come to city hall when you're there, make sure you're using your time to get updated. And I'll continue to uh, make sure that anything that we get from FEMA, anything that we get from the governor, that you're included in that communications. And while we were sitting here, I see there's gonna be another county update Tuesday morning. So I'll make sure that all of you are invited to that as well. So I'll leave my comments at that. Thank you. Councilwoman Tasha Green. Uh, yes, I just wanted to uh, state um, that the mayor's update that he referenced on Saturday was basically to just say they're um, assessing the damage. 
and that um, Nixo will be used. Um, Councilman Hersberg's email came after that to have the emergency meeting. And um, I guess if the mayor wants to put the responsibility on the council members who seem to take direction from him, you know, that's, that's one way to go about it. But it was clear that the meeting was requested. Um, there was no response from several council members. And I'm very grateful that we're having this discussion tonight. Uh, but it, it must be acknowledged that we are just now doing a full update following the fact that we had to demand this meeting due to what the um, rules and regulations allow for when three council members get together. And I will state that my basement also flooded. Um, and, and that is irrelevant. So the council members who mentioned that that is, I don't think that has any relevance to us serving our community. And there was a comment about people putting statements on social media, demanding, screaming about having this meeting. There was the only council person who even made a post about this meeting on their page until the meeting was actually scheduled was Peter Hersberg. No other council person that I'm aware of even uh, posted about this Peter's request having been made. So I'm not sure what that, that statement or what that's about because none of us posted that. Residents reposted it and, and commented on it and how they thought it was important. But Councilman Hersberg notified the community of his request to city council as he should have because that was his um, uh, notification to let them know that he was working on their behalf. Uh, one of the differences in terms of there's been a lot of discussion tonight about um, Dearborn. One of the differences in how Dearborn handled this crisis is that the Dearborn mayor is the previous uh, council president. He, they, they work excellently together and, they, and he is, uh, operates from what I can see in full transparency with his, the members of city council. Um, they immediately came to the table, got funds out, um, went back to the table with more discussion and it is a complete open door. Not, on, not only do I see him doing that with city council, I see him doing that with uh, county and federal officials. Congresswoman Tlaib was just in his city and they did a, um, a, a joint a video notification for the citizens of Dearborn. Um, and so there's a lot more transparency and uh, cohesiveness taking place in other cities that we unfortunately don't get here. And so when we say who's being updated and who's not actually, and I can honestly say that the information that I received had it not been for county and federal officials, I would have been left out of the loop. It just, I mean, we just saw tonight that some council members were given information that others did not. And it is a, a continual um, un, unresponsiveness coming from the administration. And, and it's not just with this. Um, it, regularly, we have residents stating that their emails are not responded to and they're asking us for help. I have to tell them they don't respond to our emails, my emails and requests either. So again, um, I don't, it, it wouldn't take anything more than five minutes uh, it, it's not, you know, when it, this is being explained, it's like, oh, well, you know, you're, you're tying their hands to get requests for additional funding. Does it, it is we we've, we've had Devin send us emails and we've gotten uh, funding approved for emergency items in a matter of minutes. So to expect an administration to keep city council in the loop of what has been expensed. And where do we go from here? What work has been done? Do we still need any work or are we all set? Who are these contractors? We've had contracts taking place in this city that has not only raised our taxes, but have um, actually come under the line of scrutiny in terms of conflict of interest and, and the amount of money that a lot of these contractors are getting with, with no checks and balances being done. And if anyone would like to take a firsthand look in terms of what is happening or what happened or the current condition of Hawthorne, please go visit the uh, Facebook page. It's called Move Westland Forward. They have a lot of photos. Um, and, and if you're a Westland resident and you take a look at the page, Move Westland Forward, 
and you look at the condition of that lot and you think that that is acceptable um, for us to uh, have debris basically just sitting out there like it is some sort of mini landfill, especially the, the it actually, back, that area backs up to an apartment complex. And I'm certain that the residents who live over there uh, would not agree that, that this is something um, uh, reasonable. Uh, but, but we're able to do that when, when it doesn't impact our home. So again, I am in full support of immediately moving forward. Um, as, count, as I stated before, Council President Herzberg uh, requested a meeting almost a full week ago so that we can come to the table with a plan to act as though that somebody's arms are being pulled tonight uh, because we had to force um, transparency. It's just not the case. And, and I would like to be able to um, not only be kept in the loop as we move forward, but I also would like to feel good about knowing that we're not um, selectively uh, giving money away to certain contractors and that we are doing the right thing and we're not overspending. And so I am in support of uh, expensing $500,000 um, and if uh, it, we should get to the point to where we need more than that, I think that the mayor and his administration should come to the table and inform council as they are required to, and then um, we proceed accordingly. So I will not be in support of this motion. Thank you. Councilman Hersberg. Thank you. Uh, we'll get this wrapped up. Uh, you know, we've already been here for two hours. I think the justification for having this meeting has already been made clear. Uh, this would have just distracted away from our regular council meeting on Tuesday, and uh, I'm, I'm glad everybody's here, bottom line. You know, I just, I want to address something the mayor said, you know, because sometimes there's some comments made. Uh, I, I want to direct you to section 38.7 of the city charter, mayor powers, duties, and responsibilities. Uh, as far as it goes for a state and emergency, uh, you, you should read that and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm, at this time, I'm going to move to call the question. Thank you. It's a motion to call the question by Councilman Hersberg. Support. Supported by Councilwoman Green. Mr. Clerk. Move the question. Councilman Godbaugh. This is on the motion that I made, correct? Yes. It will be, yes. Yes. Councilwoman Green. <coughs> Councilwoman Green. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought uh, I turned my mute off. Uh, no. Councilman Herzberg. No. Let me back up a second. Yeah. The maker and supporter both. This is to, to move the question. I am asking you whether you want to vote to immediately proceed to the main motion. Oh, I thought, uh, well, Godbaugh said this is on his motion, so that's where my confusion came from. Um, yes. Hold on. Councilman Hersberg called the question. Councilwoman Green, you supported it. And then you both- Yeah, and, up, so. and then Godbaugh said, this is on my motion. And-, and clarification. Uh, right. So yes, I am in agreement with calling the question. Councilman Hersberg. Yes. Pro Tem Lando. Yes. Councilman McDermott. Yes. Councilwoman Rakowski. Yes. President Hart. Yes. Calling the question has been supported unanimously. We will move directly to the one item. I'm gonna read it. It's been moved and supported that an allocation not to exceed $1 million to handle flood emergency and also to waive the charter requirement to require bids for expenditures related to the storm recovery and all funds shall emanate from the water sewer fund, all expended funds. Councilman Gabbo. Yes. Councilwoman Green. No. Councilman Herzberg. No. Pro Tem Londo. Yes. Councilman McDermott. Yes. Councilwoman Rakowski. Yes. President Hart. Yes. 
Motion passes. Thank you. We now move on to the public comment section of this meeting. Excuse me while I pull up my notes. Everyone speaking for the council should do so in a civil manner. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, vulgar language, disruptive outbursts, threats, racial slurs, or other conduct that interferes with the orderly conduct of the business meeting. Personal attacks on council members, the administration, city staff, other speakers, or members of the public will not be tolerated. The clock will start upon the first words of the speaker will not stop while the speaker is recognized from the floor. It is the speaker's option to ask questions at this time, and the person in question may choose to respond during the speaker's allotment of time. However, the clock will not be stopped once it is started. Let me go to my timer. And Mr. Pruitt, last name Pruitt. Hello, this is Pastor Edward Pruitt again. Uh, I am thankful that this did pass. Um, there are some components that I am concerned with uh, regarding through the discussion, but overall, I do believe that in the time of crisis that there needs to be um, some components where uh, the mayor has freedom to make decisions. I, I'm concerned with um, whether or not um, the powers were exercised correctly prior to the allocation. Um, but I do believe that if this was called earlier, there wouldn't have been that concern. Um, I, I think that we need to look fully into um, how things were allocated prior to, as well as what was spent, also where they came from. I do understand the city attorney's uh, position on based on what he heard. So since based on what he heard, it needs to have a full disclosure on actually what it is so that there could be an accurate um, assessment and legal analysis on it. Um, I do think that um, there is a valid concern around suspending the, um, the components around it, but if it's geared towards the bidding process, I would, um, in the midst of the crisis, I do believe that uh, this warrants standing back just a little bit. Um, I do think that council needs to be better informed. I think that, and, and not just a few, it, it needs to be a full um, seven member um, accounting. So again, just summarizing, I do agree that the mayor needs access to the million dollars up to uh, not exceeding. And I do believe that this was the right decision. Um, I think that as we look into the future, we need to have some guidelines on how to proceed in the future so that it doesn't come to this. Thank you. All right, hold on, I'm having a little problem here. I apologize. Technology is always never perfect. Uh, last name, Delph. Can you hear me? I can't. Good evening, Council. Uh, I got two questions. I want to know how $1 million out of the water and sewer fund is going to affect the water bills. Something I'm very concerned about. And second, in crisis, like in Dundee, when we had the tornadoes and that, we asked for assistance from other cities. Um, why aren't we doing that? And that'll be it. Thank you. Next up, Jay Dubois. Yes, can you hear me? I can. Uh, okay, the, the one question I have, because uh, other people have already asked, if the state called an emergency and FEMA's coming in, why are we allocating a million dollars through the water and sewage? That's my question. Okay, thank you. Any other citizen comment? All right, we'll close citizens' comments and move to comments from the administration. Mayor? Yeah, thank you, Council. Uh, I don't have anything new to add tonight, so I'll, I'll try to, those last couple of questions um, Mr. Du Bois asked about. Um, as far as emergency and FEMA goes, um, I think what Council 
approved tonight was the utilized fund so that we can continue to operate. Um, in the past, we've, we've had success uh, most recently through, uh, through COVID uh, getting reimbursements to those federal dollars. So that's what we'll, um, that's what we'll try to do on this as well. And then uh, Mr. Um, Delf asked the question, yeah, two questions actually, one, what effect would this spending have on water bills? Um, at this point, obviously that, that's a little bit too early to tell. Um, as far as um, the, the, the funds that would be utilizing for this expenses would, would come out of the, um, the unallocated fund balance within the, the water fund. Uh, then as far as reaching out to other communities, um, you know, we, we do work with other communities on a nightly basis through our uh, you know, EMS, police and fire, um, and when there's an emergency, sometimes uh, we do help each other. Um, I have to be honest with you, we, with the, the amount of homes that we've had in West Senate were affected is that we, we need all of our people here working here. We, we have not reached out to other communities and asked them for help. Um, they're all in the same boat. Um, one community did reach out and ask us if we could help them. Uh, and we told them that perhaps a little bit further down the road once once we get our residents taken care of. So um, there's there's great cooperation between the cities and um, you know on a daily basis. So you you may see a little bit more of that as we move forward and, and get out of the uh, the initial phase of the crisis. But I'm gonna leave my comments at that tonight in council. We'll uh, we appreciate uh, your action here tonight, and and I appreciate you guys working on a holiday weekend too. Um, I know some of the comments back and forth tonight may not seem like, like, like we appreciate each other's hard work, but I do appreciate the fact that you guys were here on a holiday weekend to make sure that, that we do this the right way. So um, my team's looking forward to continue working with you and um, we'll try to update you more when we meet again on Tuesday night. Thank you. Anything from the attorney's office? Yeah, I want to I want to uh, touch on two topics uh, really for my uh, friend at uh, DPS. Uh, uh, so th these may sound a little more engineering than law, but but uh, helping Ram Ramsey out here because he didn't get his chance to talk on this. Um, the, the idea of using a temporary transfer station is really a best practice because it deals with the logistics of landfilling. He mentioned the problem. The problem is you have to get slotted into the landfill with these roll offs. So to get it away from the curb and then hold it until you can get a slot from the trucking companies and the landfills. So, so this idea of using a temporary transfer location uh, really I think is, is uh, made a lot of sense here. I'm sure that's what his analysis was. Uh, although some might think it's double handling, it's the only way to deal with that logistics problem. And, and secondly, he mentioned the idea of all the city has done in terms of tightening up the system uh, to keep stormwater out of the sewer system. And the mayor and I and Ramsey have had these discussions over a period of time. And, and I think it's, you know, this is a good example of where the city council can th begin thinking about, are there things that come to it or are there different ways, whether they be um, planning or in development issues where you can continue to tighten up the system to keep stormwater out of the system. Uh, sometimes it's called green infrastructure uh, and again, that's a long-term project, but you can see the benefit of those long-term projects. So those are the two comments that came to my mind as I listened to a lot of this uh, and, and uh, wanted to pass it along. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Um, at this point, it's, it's a special meeting and I know everybody has some things going on. Um, I th I'm gonna save all my comments for the next meeting if any of the, all the council members don't agree and I'll just call for a motion to adjourn. Are there any comments from the council? All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there support? Support, Lando. Good evening, everyone, thank you. <laughs>